it's time again. All right, so I got a few questions from people asking me how I set my Sony a7 III for video. This will be a setup guide where I will be showing you my settings that I like to use to get you started. These settings have worked really well for me and I was able to work efficiently and get the best out of my camera. Roll that intro. So let's start. I have my dial one set to 4K 25 frames per second. Quick note, because I live in Europe, I have set the camera system to PAL, which outputs different frame rates than NTSC. Anyway, this will be used to shoot in regular speed. Dial two is set to 1080p 100 frames per second, which I use to shoot in slow motion. In the end of this video setup, I will show you how to set each dial accordingly. Attach a lens of yours with the lowest f-stop, switch to movie mode, go to menu and select manual exposure so that you will have full control over aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Next, we will go to file format and select XABCS 4K. In the record settings, change it to 25 frames per second at 100 megabits per second, which will give you the highest quality possible. Next, you want to change the autofocus drive to fast. You will be surprised on how fast the a7 III can grab focus. And having the autofocus track sense to responsive will make the focus react even better. Movie with shutter will enable you to record by just pressing the shutter button. Finder monitor display, this can be very annoying. So change that to monitor manual so that it doesn't automatically switch. Now we're moving on to the custom button setup for video. The control wheel is set to ISO because I use this a lot and is the most convenient way to adjust the ISO by just scrolling the wheel. I have the custom button C1 set to focus mode. I can either switch it to continuous autofocus or manual focus. On some lenses, you have the switches on the side of the lens, on others you don't. So that's why this toggle can be very useful. Custom button C2 is set to finder monitor selection. I don't use this that often. I guess it can be helpful if you want to have a clear view of what you are shooting. For example, when it's bright outside, you can just switch it to finder view. Custom button C3 is set to APS-C Super 35 crop mode, which is a nice toggle switch that allows me to crop in whenever I need to. Custom button C4 is set to zoom, which allows me to zoom in twice as much. The multi-selection center button is set to focus standard, which I use to move the focus area around. The center button is set to center lock on autofocus. This is a really nice feature that allows me to select and track an object or subject. For the left button, I have it set to focus area. Most of the time I use either zone or expand flexible spot. Zone covers a certain area that is in focus. The expand flexible focus spot gives you a specific focus point. The right button is set to picture profile. No picture profile. This is probably the best settings to have if you need to quickly upload a video to your social media platform. This picture profile allows you to have a faster workflow and you don't have to do much color grading because it really looks great out of camera. You probably have to do some minor tweaks, but for the most part, it's ready to be published. Cine 4, I also like using Cine 4, which is not so difficult to color grade and also offers dynamic range. Not as much as S-Log2, but it definitely is a good profile picture to start with. S-Log2, S-Log2 is very a flat picture profile that offers more dynamic range when color grading, but you need to know how to use it because you have to expose differently than the other picture profiles. I use S-Log2 most of the time, especially for client work. It isn't great for shooting in low lit environments because it will introduce a lot of noise 
in the shadows. Depending on the type of video you are making, you want to set your picture profile to your preference. If I had a cinema camera that could shoot raw, I would definitely just shoot everything in raw, period. All right, let's move on. So with the down button, I can select the white balance. I always have it on manual white balance so I can easily change the temperature from there. The AEL button is set to monitor brightness. The sunny weather mode uses a lot of battery. That is why I sometimes switch it to manual mode and keep it at minus two. The autofocus on button is set to focus magnifier, which magnifies up to four times. This is super helpful if you are shooting uh, on a manual lens and need to check your focus. The focus hold button is only available if you have a button on the side of the lens. Now we're heading to the function menu setup which is the FN button. Here you can add more settings for a quick access. Function upper two is set to gamma display assist. So when I shoot in S-Log2, the image is displayed in a low contrast, which makes it difficult to set your exposure or focus right. Gamma displays helps assist you by giving you a Rec. 709 gamma look, correcting the exposure and contrast of the image. Function upper three is set to prioritize record media, which allows me to organize my media, for example, between A roll and B roll. Function upper four is set to audio record level. I set it down to around five. I use the Rode VideoMic Pro, set the mic to zero to get the cleanest audio. Function lower one is set to interval shooting. By activating that, I can create time lapse. Note that you have to be in photo mode in order to use the time-lapse function. I have a tutorial on that if you want to check that out right here. Lower two is set to zebra display. This helps getting my exposure right. Uh, function lower three is set to peaking display. This is very useful to get your focus right. Under peaking settings, I have the peaking level set to mid and peaking color red. Function lower four is set to face eye priority autofocus that will track the face of a subject. Function lower five is set to grid line. I use the rule of thirds that helps me get my composition right. Function lower six is set to marker display, which allows me to get that cinematic aspect ratio. You will find the other aspect ratios in the marker display settings. Let's move over to the dial setup now. With the back scroll, I can control the aperture, which you will use a lot more, and the shutter speed for the front scroll. Power safe start time is set to five minutes. Record media setting is set to on so that it will automatically switch to the other SD card. All right, so we're almost done. Before we get to the my menu section, we are going to set uh, both dial one and two accordingly. We currently have our frame rate set to 4K 25 frames per second. Before we save it to dial one, go to your screen and change the shutter speed to one over 50 since we are shooting at 25 frames per second. Set the lowest aperture so that when saved, it will always go for the lowest f-stop depending on the mounted lens. Set your ISO as low as possible. Go to the memory setting and save it to the memory slot one. Make sure to check everything before you save it. Save it by pressing the center button. Yes, now you have dial one set to 4K 25 frames per second. Now to save 1080p 100 frames per second on dial two, you want to go back to file format and select XAVC SHD. Then go to record settings and select 100p at 100 megabits per second. Change the shutter speed to one over 200 because again, our frame rate is set to 100 frames per second. Go back to memory setting and save it to memory slot two. Now you have dial two set to 1080p 100 frames per second. All right, for the last part in my menu section, I have NTSC PAL. Depending on where you live or which country you're in, you would want to set it to the desired system. For me, it will be PAL because I live in Europe. 
IR remote control. When being on my own and recording all by myself, I usually use a remote because it's easier to just press the record button on the remote. At last, format. After importing all footages and backing it up, I format the card immediately so that there are no problems occurring uh, during my next shoot. All right, guys, so I hope this helped you out. If you have any improvements or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. When I first bought this camera, I had no idea on how to set it up. It was very confusing and I needed time to set it up. I had to do my research online and even ordered a manual book to learn the ins and outs of this camera. My first camera was actually the Canon 80D, uh, which was way easier to set up than the Sony a7 III. Anyway, I created this video for you guys so you could set it up the right way. I strongly encourage you test the settings out, experiment with it, and see what works for you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so because you would really help me out in keeping this channel going. Thank you very much guys, uh, that's all I have to say. Take care and see you in another video.